Hola Jamie. Hola profesor, ¿cómo está? Bien, ¿y tú? Oye, todavía no me llamas Rafa. <risa> Va a tomar un poco de tiempo para acostumbrarme. <risa> Yo estoy también muy orgulloso de estar acá contigo porque te recuerdo con mucho cariño como una estudiante muy aplicada y muy interesada en los asuntos latinoamericanos. Así que me gustó mucho ver el, el mural y la conexión cultural que tiene con, con tu a Morelia. Hablarnos un poquito sobre, sobre el transformo, el trasfondo geográfico. Bueno, en uh, regards to the monarchs. Yeah. Uh -huh. Bueno, las, las mariposas monarcas, uh, de hecho la, la mascota de nuestro equipo de fútbol en, en Michoacán es, son las monarcas. Uh, porque las monarcas, uh, su origen es de ahí y ahí es donde, donde viven y ahí es a donde uh -huh. regresan. Entonces, Uh, la primera generación empieza ahí y después este, uh, empieza a migrar hacia el norte, uh, cruza la frontera de los Estados Unidos y México y después uh, generación tras generación se, se vuelven más y más fuertes hasta que la última mm -hmm. generación, creo, creo que son como tres generaciones, la última generación es la que hace el vuelo más largo, uh, la jornada más larga y mm -hmm. llega hasta Canadá para pasar allá al tiempo de verano entonces esa misma generación que llega hasta Canadá y que pasa su verano ahí son los que son, es la generación de las mariposas que regresa y hace el viaje desde Canadá hasta México entonces pues uh, personalmente las, las mariposas monarcas uh, me recuerdan a, a mi hogar al lugar a donde yo nací ahí uh, es esa como ese orgullo de, de, de ser de donde soy y también pues es un símbolo muy grande para para la gente que es inmigrante. Do people from Michoacán here in the United States know that story? Are they um, are they aware of um, how powerful these little butterflies are? Yeah, I think a lot of people actually like someone someone that works here at the restaurant um, where the mural is located. They they're from the same state that I'm from and actually from the very same town and so they, I, they you know they see the monarch butterflies and immediately connect mm. to that um, image because it's uh, you know something that represents our, our state back in Mexico um, but I think to a lot of other people who are not from Michoacán you know it's, um, it, it's it's not the same not the same connection right and so everybody who approaches the images or the mural uh, kind of connect to it in a different way right So people who are from Michoacán might connect to it because of the monarch butterflies. People who are um, involved with the immigration reform movement might connect with the mural because of, of what it says. We are all immigrants. And because of the monarch butterflies being a symbol for, for, how, for immigrants and how migration is a natural process. Hmm. And, that's, and it's been a, bit, a symbol for years, right? So um, the question was, Do, do people from Michoacán understand the meaning? Yeah, I think so, for <laughs> nice. sure. Yeah. So we are here now in Havana Sandwich Shop, shop. in Beaufort Highways, where the monarcas are looking at us. Um, I guess my question to you is, why did you decide on this place in particular for the mural? Well, um, So for the, this, this was done as part of um, uh, a public art conference sponsored or hosted by um, Living Walls, The City Speaks, and We Love You High. And so um, those two organizations uh, kind of were the ones to find locations for us to paint murals on, to find walls for us. Mm -hmm. And then after, you know, finding a wall, we would then be in communication with the business owners or the wall owners to kind of, you know, figure out what is it going to look like, um, how much space are we going to use, all of the logistics and all of the specifics. Um, so I actually bounced around between a couple of walls and I, it, you know, the conference was approaching and we didn't have a wall for me yet and that we looked at a car wash wall in Chambly and then another car wash wall in Doraville. Um, we also looked at the dentist wall across the street from here. Um, but finally this, you know, this wall came up and I started 
you know, having communication with the business owners here at Havana and you know, it just happens it happened to be perfect because when we first immigrated here, um, when I was seven years old, my this is the first place that my mom worked mm. in. And so she was working here at Havana making sandwiches when, when we first arrived and so so funny, right, that now, you know, I got to paint this mural that's all about my experience, right, as an immigrant and um, as being undocumented and, and that connection, right, to, to um, so that connection to my story and, and being able to paint it in a place where that, that kind of starts, is, a, is part of the beginning of our story in this country, right, of our journey. If that makes any sense. Yeah, that's very interesting. <laughs> you mentioned Chambly, you mentioned Beaufort Highway. I, I guess part of the um, purpose of the project is to highlight specific areas in the city with high concentration of Latino um, people, immigrants, business people, um, as a way to showcase how important this community is, has always been, but um, today is very important visually. What would you say about, to anyone who is listening to this conversation, what would you say is the, your contribution? What, 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 are, you, what are you hoping, your message? Mm -hmm. what, what would you hope that message be? for the person who's listening to this conversation? Um, I think for my mural in particular, I want to send a message to the people that are here that they deserve to be here and that they deserve to be in any space that they choose to be in. Because as human beings, just like the monarch butterflies move so naturally um, north when they need to be there for the summer to survive, immigrants people like families uproot and move because they need to survive um you know my parents didn't leave their country and their language and their families to break a law or to be criminalized you know they moved to to make sure that we um would have better opportunities in our life and, and to ensure that we would have um a, a better future than they did, right? My parents didn't go past elementary school. And so they, you know, in bringing us here or in, in, in uprooting and, and immigrating here, they they made a very courageous decision, right, for our futures. And it's a, it's, a, it's a decision of sacrifice. And I don't think a lot of people understand that, right? So it's, all, it's a message for immigrants that they, they deserve to be wherever they need to be to survive, as well as a message for anyone that sees a mural, anyone who is having conversations about immigrants. And really everybody um, should be part of the conversation, but a message that everybody who is here came from somewhere else, right? The, the text on the mural says, we are all immigrants. And I do it, I, you know, put it up there in English and Spanish because I want people to be more mindful of this country's history when they speak about immigration. And when, um, when, <laughs> so whether it's um, people who were well off and immigrating here from Europe or it's people, you know, fleeing refugees or, you know, back when people were forced to come here through slavery, nobody here started out here. And so it's kind of, um, what is the word? It's, 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 all, it's hypocrisy to, to have these conversations about immigrants as if we don't belong because we are everybody in this country, if that makes any yeah, sense. It does. Yeah, I mean, we're, Jamie, reading some of the interviews, you always make sure that people know that you're a graduate from Agnes Scott College, and we're very proud to call you one of our alumna. What would you say was the most, the biggest impact that Agnes Scott gave you as a student? 
That's an easy one. <laughs> um, Agnes Scott helped me see my passion as a platform for change. So my love for art and even my experience, right, as a platform for change. Um, the, everything I learned, the interactions I had with other students, the exposure to other um, people from all over the world and people who had different identities kind of pushed me out of my comfort zone, right? Out of those, that, that confine of I'm undocumented and that's all I had to, that's all that I, I was worried about because that's what I needed to figure out in order to survive and to get, you know, to reach my goals, to go to college, to, to, to be a teacher, right? And so um, meeting people who were also, you know, going through um, or suffering injustices because of their identity pushed me out of that confine and helped me understand that in order for social change to to exist right in order, in order for us to foster social change we need to work across those differences and we can't be stuck in our own little um, bird cage mm -hmm. if you will um, you know, I learned a lot about I think the biggest one of the biggest things that I learned that was kind of like just a, a huge awakening for me was um, uh, when I, I took women's studies and I learned about uh, the systems of privilege and oppression mm -hmm. it helped me realize that you know I put so much guilt on myself for being undocumented and, and my, I heard my parents say you know we work we clean the houses because this is just the way it's supposed to be you know we're undocumented this is why we work in the kitchen and in, in construction but um, that's the, I, I realized then when I learned those things that that was that internalized oppression, right? And that, no, this is not the way things are supposed to be. As a human being, I deserve to have an, a quality education. I deserve to be aware of the decisions that are being made politically that impact me on a very personal, um, in a very personal way. So, there, I mean, there's layers and layers and layers of things that I learned at Agnes Scott from, from my classmates, from my professors, um, and... I don't think there's really an end to to the impact that Agnes made on me and, and you know I hope to make that same impact for my students because I wish I would have learned the things that I learned at Agnes earlier mm. on <laughs> um, yeah are you working on any new art projects yeah so I actually I'm uh, Banyan is um, a communications company um, here in Atlanta that is commissioning me so I can say I'm being commissioned by Banny and a company here in Atlanta to uh, paint a mural and the mural will be happening during a conference um, that will be going on here in Atlanta and it will, me painting the mural will be streamed live into the conference as people answer the question um, we haven't decided on a final question, but uh, the the focus is change for good, hmm. and that's what their focus is as a company. And so people will be able to share their answers on on how in their lives or in in the work that they do every day do they create change for good. Hmm. And so um, I will be responding to their to their answers on the mural as they submit them. So this is something very new to me, and I'm really excited about the challenge, but. I think, um, you know, just it aligns perfectly with, you know, even the, the thing, it aligns perfectly with um, the things that I learned about, the things that I learned at Agnes Scott about, um, you know, how to, how to create change, right? And like working across those identities. And so this is me challenging myself to do that and stepping out of my comfort zone and not staying in this like immigration reform bubble that, um, you know, it's it's easy to, because there's so much to, to get done. So it's easy to kind of get stuck in that like little corner of, of this huge world. <laughs> Sounds good. And everything that's happening in this country, yeah. You got it. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Well, thank you very much, Amy. I think we have some Cuban sandwiches calling our names. I know. <laughs> thank yeah. you, Jamie. Thank you. Thank you.